I know, I know our citizens are interested about our rivers and the, the state of our rivers, particularly the Trafuncta River, the Bogaflyer River, the Bogachitta River, and the Pearl River. Uh, I saw one, one prominent reporter out this morning along the rivers in St. Tammany and Tangipola Parish that uh, was, was reporting, because it is a concern. And it is of great interest to our citizens. The Trafuncta River at Highway 190 Goodby, the Bogafly at Boston Street, the Bogafly at Camp Covington, north of Covington, and the Bogachitta River in Bush, all those rivers have crested and are now receding due to no rain yesterday sim uh, simply helped quite a bit. The Pearl River is expected to crest later this week. The Pearl River near Pearl River and Slidell is always about four to five days cresting after the other the rivers. Uh, this is good news about the rivers. They all crested at the, at the moderate to major flood stage. Yes, there was some flooding in, in low-lying areas, but it is good news in that these levels were less than the 2016, the March 2016 levels. So we're glad to uh, be able to provide that information. Uh, there is a gasoline shortage. Again, as we were making our rounds today, we witnessed the long lines, the long lines at the service stations, uh, some getting some long car lines, but there were also long people lines carrying gas cans. Some service stations were only offering gasoline refills with, with three gallon and five gallon gas cans. Uh, perhaps they're being used, of course, to, to operate their generators. Uh, but there is a shortage simply because of the demand before evacuation and the inability of, of the, the bulk gas trucks to get back, it, get back to uh, replenish the supply. So that's another reason why we've been asking our citizens to stay off the roads uh, until those services and, and supplies have been replenished. Uh, no new news about schools. Uh, Superintendent Trey Fult, uh, Super Superintendent Frank Javia of the St. Tammany Parish School System was here yesterday, and he gave us an update on the schools. Uh, while they're closed, they're assessing the school buildings and facilities at this time, and they will be closed until further notice. And we'll keep our citizens advised of that. Uh, there is a boil advisory still in effect with Tammany Utilities, some of the other private utilities, and even some of the municipalities. It's a precautionary boil water advisory. We, are, we continue to test the systems, but, but due to power outages and drop in water pressure in the distribution lines, we are asking our citizens as a precaution to boil the water before drinking. I spoke with representatives of a couple of our banks, local banks, and some banks will open tomorrow in the Slidell, Mandeville, and Covington area where cashing checks with limits uh, will be available while ATMs may not be available due to telephone lines uh, not uh, being active. So some of the banks will be established and, and, and open for business tomorrow, cashing checks with limits. We had a damage assessment team go out from St. Tammany Parish government uh, basically employees from our, led by our building office, building permit office. They're doing a damage assessment of homes to determine the damage and the level that we will receive for disaster assistance. Uh, there are thresholds that we must meet and we verify uh, those who have submitted their addresses to us, but we also do field surveys to uh, make those assessments. Uh, we had six teams this morning. We'll have more teams going out by the end of the week, and we hope to have those total assessments done by the end of the week. Uh, I mentioned the boil water earlier, but I also ask that 
our citizens conserve water. No matter what water system you're on, conserving water at this time, when the, particularly when the power is off, it allows, it, al it minimizes the impact on your sewerage system, which again has no electrical power as well. So a, a way of minimizing the impact is to conserve water. All state highways are expected to be open by the end of today, end of the day today. Uh, we, uh, St. Tammany Parish crews, as well as volunteers, worked yesterday on the main thoroughfares, particularly state highways, and they're, they're working today in moving debris from our parish roadways, and they should be working through the week to remove debris or off the roadway uh, through the end of the week. Once the debris is pushed to the side by the push contractor, it is then picked up by our debris contractor. We have a contract with a, a, a debris contractor and they're staged and ready to start picking up debris. Uh, along the highways as well as in the residential neighborhoods once once the debris is pushed to the side in the residential neighborhoods uh, that in the in the residential neighborhoods will not take place anytime soon I mean it will take place sooner than later but uh, the the roadways uh, will take place first and of course we ask our citizens when they are placing debris curbside to, to separate from green debris, construction debris, white goods like refrigerators and such, and household garbage. Household garbage should be still placed in your household garbage bins and containers. And as we, we spoke yesterday, please do not place your debris under under high electrical lines on transformers electrical transformers with underground electric next to mailboxes so find a place you might have to put it in your driveway to avoid all of those things but uh, we will be we will will be having our debris contractors coming out to address that animal services the animals at our Department of Animal Services, Highway 36, in Abita Springs, Lacombe, are safe and secure. We are arranging a transport flight with our partners at Brandywine Valley SPCA and Wings of Rescue to get some currently housed animals out. This is to make room for the large number of animals we're anticipating we'll receive as the recovery effects begin. Stray or found animals will not be sent out on this flight until the hold times are up. We're double checking and verifying everything before we send any animals out. Some of our nonprofit partners, including Marty Paws and Scott's Wish, will be fundraising weekly for ground transports. Please contact 985-809 0183 for emergencies. If you're messaging the Animal Services Facebook page with a report about an animal left behind, please include the full address and city of where the animals are located. So I hope that was a good public service announcement about our, our, our animals, because there are a lot of questions about that. And we've been happy to uh, be able to provide care for our animals during this time. Before the storm, a curfew was issued, a curfew uh, declaration was issued for the safety, health, and welfare of our citizens and a protection during, during, before, and after the storm, for immediately after the storm. While, while we still urge our citizens to Stay off the highways, limit your time on the highways because of the other reasons we already talked about. We still want them to do so. However, I have 
deactivated the curfew declaration moving forward. There are some municipalities that have instituted a dust to dawn curfew and those will be uh, still in effect and enforced by their local authorities. And before I ask Clarence to come up, I'm going to just briefly mention that I've spoken to doctors with our local hospitals. And we, again, we appreciate our utility companies for restoring power to our, our hospitals. Uh, they are very grateful of that. They want, to, they want us to remind our citizens that our hospitals are up and open and still treating patients. They're still treating COVID patients. Surgeries are taking place on an as-needed basis to the extent that they can. And they're ready to serve those that need medical attention, whether it be emergency or uh, surgeries that need to take place. They're gradually moving back in, into that. And again, it's because of the services that uh, have been provided to them uh, to get back up and running. So I'll reserve further comments until uh, Clarence Poe, Director of, po Director of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness, gives us an update on some of the other needs that are being provided to our citizens. And uh, I'll reserve comments, and then we'll have a question and answer. Thank you. Clarence? Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon. We're continuing operations here right here in this emergency operations center. We're still staffed 24-7 at this time. And we'll probably continue to do that. We'll look at it tomorrow and see if we need to start down staffing some of, the, uh, some of our stakeholders here in the emergency operations center. Uh, the damage assessment teams has already done quite a bit out there. The parish president talked about the local damage assessment teams and what we've looked at. When we look at it, we know that our critical infrastructure, when it comes to our critical facilities and all, we've done fairly well. Don't see any major things that's happened to the infrastructure here in our parish. The only thing that we have with those critical facilities, like your hospitals, your nurse home, is the fact that some of them are running on generator power. And we're still in the process of making sure that we continue to provide fuel for those. We'll continue that operation. We still got shelters open here in the parish. We have two shelters that's been open from the beginning. We'll keep those, op we'll keep those open. We'll start to continue to reassess those different things. One of the things that was driving the, first, the fact to keep those open was the fact that we didn't know exactly what the rivers was going to do. The parish president talked about, talked about the rivers and them dropping, okay? Our first responders have done an outstanding job. I definitely want to thank every one of them that's out there for their tireless operation of what they've been doing for the past couple of days. The search and rescue, they've been there ready to go. We've had to conduct a few of those, okay? So right now things are looking very good. We were really blessed, okay? We're gonna continue those different things to look at our neighbors also. We're working with our neighbors. When I say neighbors, that's our region, our state, and our federal stakeholders. We actually sit down with FEMA today and talked about those different things, talked about the needs of the parish, those things. We want to make sure that once the parish is reestablished, once the electricity is on, what is it that we need to expedite for our citizens? Now, today we know that the, uh, that FEMA has already approved individual assistance for the parish. That's a good thing. Now, we will be requesting preliminary damage assessment for Category 3 C through G later on. That's those things, those protective measures, and all those different things that we've done in response to this event. We'll continue those. Let's get back to where we are, where we need to be. If you're evacuated, okay, and you're in a safe place, I know that you want to get home and check on your, your homes and every different things. But right now, with the status of the parish, it's like, uh, Mr. Swess was saying those things are coming up. They're doing their assessments. But if you're safe and secure where you are right now, just hold out a little bit longer, okay, until we get those resources completely established to support everything here in the parish. You have any questions of me, you can call here at the Mercy Operations Center. You've been given that number a number of times. That's area code 985-898-2323. The ELC is staff. If you have questions and different things like that of what's going on, you just need information, by all means, give us a call. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Claire. Well, it's on the top of my head. Let, let me say it. With regard to businesses open, uh, with the rest restoration of power, yes, it's allowing, it'll be allowing uh, more businesses to open, more of our supermarkets and such, uh, as they're receiving supplies too, to fill their shelves. So we know that that's, that's going to be happening in the days to come. Uh, I too want to thank all of our partners and stakeholders that, that are here at the EOC. They're in a room back over here, there's 40, 40 sitting around uh, receiving calls and, and deploying assistance where needed. I want to thank each and every one of our uh, stakeholders for their assistance and, and their continued help uh, during this uh, recovery. Um, to find out what businesses are open, you could go to stpgov.org slash open. And for those who have been asking how they can help, we have another uh, website that people can, if they have free help, free assistance, they can go to stpgov.org slash recovery. Uh, that's to offer help during the recovery uh, people who want to offer help. So those are, those are great uh, resources as well, and I thank them. So I'll open it up to questions if there's no other statements from up here. Yes. Yes. Um, what's the word on distribution sites when it comes to water, tarps, uh, ice, other necessities? Very good question. We've put in a request to the state for two pod sites. Now those would be category, uh, be type three pod sites. We've requested on each side of the parish, one out in Slidell on the east side of the parish at Her Heritage Park and another one out here in Coverton at First Baptist Church. We've tried to find the ETA on exactly when that's going to happen. I think that's going to happen if pretty pretty soon here. So continue continue to stay to uh, stay informed of what's going on with those. Now most people say when they open up pod sites, then the things that come with it is water, ice, blue tarps, and MREs. Okay, but it all depends on the incident and what's being distributed at that, at that time. So when you say blue tarps, then you know, we have a program, and most of you are probably familiar with that. It's called the Blue Top Program. Well, that takes a while because you have to have a Corps of Engineers that has to come in and do an assessment to see if that need is there. That takes about two or three weeks, but we do have ample amount of Blue Tops on hand. So if somebody just requesting a top because they had some damage to their roof, by all means, contact that number, 898-2323, and we'll get you a Blue Top. So just continue to stay, uh, look at different things to see when those resources are going to be coming into the parish. They'll be real soon. Thank you. 